Come on, I'm going to say it like the old folk. You said, we trying to get all of our ducks in a row before we move. And then after we moved, the ducks was in a row, but nothing happened. See, it's better to move on God's timing with your ducks out of line than to think you know more than God. I'm telling you, there's a reason God did not just rapture the church like so many wanted him to do. God said, I need you here. And I need y'all to stick to what you know. If you don't know science, don't talk science to nobody. Stick. If you ain't a doctor, don't use medical terms. Just stick. Come on, because some of us get caught up talking what we don't. I'm going to tell you now, God healed me. What he healed you from? Well, I can't even pronounce the word that they say what I was about, but I know I'm better. I know I'm better. Now, the antithesis of sticking, you got to hear this, is to forget. But it's not a slip of the memory or the mind. But it is willful neglect. It is when a person intentionally does not recall, remember, or give praise for what God has done. Notice it is a choice not to meditate or to know what your God did for you. It is to forget the Lord. Don't act like that. Because God will be good to some people. He'll bring folk through things that only he could have brought them through. Oh yes, I'm talking to somebody. He'll be good to them. He'll, 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 he'll cause his face to, to just shine upon them. He'll help them in a way that no other can help. And then they'll turn around and forget what God did for them. I know it's true because I know what God did for some of you. Yet when I look at how you praise him, your praise says to me, you have forgotten. When I look at your expression or your attitude about giving, I can see that you have forgotten what God has done for you. Your willingness to sacrifice and do everything that he tells you to do is an indication that you have forgotten what he done for you. Because let's be honest, you know how we are when we get in trouble. Oh, when we need God the most, we'll get the promise in what we're going to do if God will do this, that, and the other. God, if you just raise me up, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll obey you, God. I'll give whatever you want me to give. I'll go, Lord, wherever you would have for me to go. I'll serve you in the manner that you want me to serve. But then, saints of God, forget the God of their salvation. Some folk get blessed, they get money, they start doing better than they've ever done, and now all of a sudden, they don't want to serve. Ministry is not as important to sister girl any longer because now she has some things that she's really not used to having. 
Come on, I'm going to preach on you. I'm going to preach on myself. You got to be careful that when God blesses you, that you don't forget the one that blessed you. Don't you give me that attitude. I knew you when you was broke. Don't give me that attitude. I knew y'all when you were struggling. I you ever seen somebody change on God? Has anybody ever changed on you? I knew you before you drove the foreign car. I knew you before you could take vacation and have them paid for. I knew you back then. I'll tell your neighbor, be careful that you don't forget the Lord. Some of y'all don't praise God the way that you used to. Some of you don't even get up on your feet like you used to. Some of you used to run around the church, but you ain't ran in a year or so. What's happening? Have you forgot that you was a low-down drunk? Have you forgot that you was cr- Be careful. Tap three feet folk that's around you and tell them, be careful. Be careful, be careful. Oh, I need you to help warn somebody. Tell them be careful. Acting like you can't put your hands together. You used to clap before that diamond ring was blinging on your finger. You used to give God the praise before you were dressed so nice and sharp. What's happening? What's going on with Zion? Zion don't want to praise no more. Has Zion got tired? The old prophet used to say, oh, Zion, what's the matter now? Look at the church. Many of us are spoiled with the blessings of God. But rarely do we obey him. He used to could ask you for your last and your smile giving it. Now you're questioning. Does it take all of that? Be seated, be seated. Because before you feel like I'm just on you, look at Deuteronomy 8. Before you feel like I'm just too hard this morning, I'm going to have to back it up with some Bible. And as I'm turning, I want you to know something. God, one thing God knows about his folk is that they can be a trip sometimes. I said one thing God knows about his own people. Where my leaders at? Well, my leaders, listen, leaders, you're going to lead God's people. It's something I need to share with y'all about them. They are a trip sometimes. Even though God told me to get my little self to the church house, is it all right if I just if I just live stream you? Cause Pastor, I just done got so used to watching you in my PJs. I'm just I, I watch you while I'm cooking breakfast, Pastor. I just I'm just loving the word. But see, sometimes the proof that you hadn't forgotten is the willingness to sacrifice your time, your money, your resources. Oh, see, I didn't get that many clap. To be where God wants you to be. To do what God wants you to do. Since you call him your Lord. Don't forget that you are slaves. Don't forget we slaves. You are not. You're not your own. You knew that when you was in the apartment. Somehow when you got your house, you you forgot. You knew it before you landed that good job. You knew you was a slave. You knew you had to be where God wanted you to be. Now, not only will you miss church, you will volunteer to be at work over being in God's house. You didn't do such things. When you was broke. Deuteronomy 8 and 10. This is what the Bible says. When you have eaten. And a fool. Then you shall bless the Lord. Your God. For the good land. Which he. Has given you. Watch this saints. When you have eaten. And a what? Fool. 
tell you, now, you know how it is naturally. Folk change on you when they get full. Some folk get sleepy when they get full. Some folk get sad they'll go when they get full. They don't want to. Some folk get real comfortable when they get full. But we want him to fill us, don't we? I said we want him to fill us, don't we? You know some of you, Lord, Lord, fill me up to my cup. Just, just overflow. But are you going to be the same way, fool, as you was when you was empty? See, see, it's something about being empty that makes you desperate. Empty folk get to church on time. Empty folk will be out there and ain't nobody opened up the door yet. See, see, we ain't ready for this. You, I, I, I know you fool when you just drag in the church late like it ain't like you just going in here. Oh well, I've seen folk that need help stay back for church to talk to people. About needing financial assistance. That always run out the door when service is over. But you'll tell them, say, look, it may be an hour before somebody can talk to you. Oh, uh, that'll be fine. I'm going to sit my little self right over here till somebody can speak with me. Whenever they can talk with me, I appreciate it. See, you empty. I say, you empty. There are preachers that change. There are preachers that when they empty, they preach what God wants them to preach. But when they get full, they listen to what the people want to hear. I don't want to. I don't want to make them mad because they're putting something in in my pocket. But I come to tell you, you don't have such a preacher because some of my hardest messages come in the month of appreciation. So I'm gonna know who really a lover of the word because if you're looking for an excuse to be mad. You know I give them to you in April. Uh, y'all y'all laughing, but you know that's serious. Some of you, all I gotta do is say the right word, and you'll you'll take your law. Well, I was gonna bless it. He feel that way about it. Listen to me. This is God talking to his people. He said, when you have eaten and are full, you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes which I command you today. Notice, it's Moses telling them what to do. Well, I'm going to do what God tell me to do. But see, God going to tell you sometime what to do through your pastor. I'm establishing this principle now. There are some things I tell you when you really know me. If you just got here, I understand. But when you really know me, there are some things I should be able to tell you. And you ain't got to tell me you got to go pray about that. I'm telling you what God will have for you to do. Come on. It's getting tight. See, Moses said, which I have commanded you, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and you dwell in them, when your herds and your flocks multiply, your silver and your gold are multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied when your heart is lifted up. You forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. I'm warning you that when I have blessed you, don't allow your heart to be lifted up. Don't become so prideful that you think you did. There are some of them we talk about our blessing, we never mention God. And that's wrong. If God gave you the job, 
if you're going to talk about the job, the first thing you should let folk know is that God gave it to me. Then give them your qualifications. Then tell them what separates you from somebody else. I ain't telling you not to feel good about yourself. But if God did it, to me, he should be the first one that gets the glory. Somebody compliments you about your car. If God gave it to you, first thing you should say, this is a blessing from the Lord. Watch it when your head get too high. Oh, I'm going to preach it right. Because God know how to humble you. God will take you back to the first grade. Even though your testimony is that you're in college. God don't like people who forget him. If I talk to somebody about my marriage, I don't start out with how much we love each other. I start out by saying, God, he, he blessed us. He done caused us to get over things that if it wasn't, oh, come on, I need some real marriage for He caused us to love each other, forget about stuff. If I ever talk to you about my wife, I'll let you know she's from God. I know she's God sent. She ain't perfect. Come on. Be seated. Be seated. But tell somebody the nerve of you to forget.